Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Euro Fantasy Football and welcome to my video. Let's get to business. Um, it is time to look at my new team going into match day two. As you all know, I have already activated my limitless chip. Now, I could have used the wild card, but you know, the first strategy that I thought of when I started playing this game is using the limitless chip in match day two. I don't know how it's going to plan out. I'm hoping that it's going to go well, but we'll just have to see and wait. So before that, let's just have a quick look at match day one and just to see what's happened. As you can see, uh, so Ferran Torres got me three points. Um, so a little bit disappointing there, but Paul Torres here with a clean sheet for my 4.5 million defender. I still have one player left and that is Jota and I will make that move once we see the team lineups. And as you can see, I've got 71 points for match day one. One player left remaining. And let's just have a quick look at the overall ranks. So green arrows all around. And inside, what, 15k, let's just say. And I've been looking at the overall ranks. I just wanted to see like how far am I off 10k or 5k and so on. And check this out. So I'm just going to go for, I don't know, um... Yeah, 74 points there. What, three more extra points. And you can't see it here. Let me just do this. As you can see, only three points behind top 10k. So, yeah, there are a massive jumps, but there are a massive falls as well. So, we'll see what happens. I'm hoping that Chota will return. However, Ronaldo is on show and there's a couple of highly owned players left yet to play. So, um, you know, I'll be so happy to remain in like 20,000 mark, but we will see. Anyways, guys, I hope that I've helped you. Uh, if you're new to the channel, if you haven't already, please do subscribe and drop a like on the video. So, as for my new team, this is how it's looking like so far. So, yesterday's team, I was around 80% happy with it. Today's team, I'm around 95% ready. For match day two as you can see i got my team set up i set my formation as well and there are a couple of transfer force that i have in mind that i want to talk to you guys about okay uh, if you guys got any questions about your team questions about players uh nations and strategies just let me know in the comments below i'm pretty certain that there's going to be a lot of other people looking at those comments to help each other out okay so I activate the limitless chip and this is pretty much my team. I'm going to go through it and I'm going to be looking at my other transfer options as well. Okay. So up front, I have got Lukaku, Harry Kane and Mbappe. So first up is Harry Kane. 36% owned, two points there, 11.5 against Croatia. He pretty much did absolutely nothing. Um, but against Scotland, this might be a good fixture for him to do well in. That's why he's in the team so far. However, I am looking at Griezmann. Uh, Lukaku, 51% owned. He got 10 points in the last game against Russia at 11 million. To be honest with you, I don't even know why I'm talking about the prices because I use, I'm use i using the limitless chip, so it doesn't really matter. But um, against Denmark, I think this is going to be a tougher game. I think it's going to be a close game. Um, but if Belgium is going to score, it's going to be from Lukaku. So that's why he's there. And he's there to protect the rank as well. And the other striker is Mbappe. Now, like I mentioned, I am looking at Griezmann. I think he is a fantastic option. Uh, I think Griezmann is on penalties as well. So that just gives him more of a chance to return something. 36% uh, iron from Mbappe. So we'll see how France play against Germany and we'll make our final decisions. Uh, very good fixture for um, France here against Hungary. So this is why we are, um, you know, bringing in French players. Now, as for the midfielders, uh, I think this is the only position that I can change one or two players around. I think in defence, I'm pretty much set. Um, so I'm going to start from here. Insigne, 11% uh, owned. He got eight points, so he scored a lovely goal against Turkey. Uh, I think Switzerland is going to be a tougher game, but because of Italy's um, stats and the way they've been playing lately, they're just looking so good, like really, really good. 
Um, and Insigne is one of those players that can get a lot of points. Now, I, I looked at Immobile, but I just need that striker. Like, I, I need those positions. Um, and I can get like really good Italian players elsewhere. So that's kind of the, my thoughts there. Um, yeah, Malenko is a fantastic option. I think he is on penalties. Uh, scored a fantastic goal against Netherlands. I'm not saying he's going to do this again, but I am looking at attacking um, North Macedonia fixture. I think they're going to be really leaky at the back. You know, I'm pretty sure that North Macedonia is going to go for it. Uh, they're going to try and to win as well. Um, and Ukraine, you know, they lost the first game. I really like it. There's a couple of options in the Ukraine side that I'm looking at as well. So we will look at that in a second. So uh, Jan Malenko, 1%. Now, the team that I'm showing you is pretty template. And I've been looking at this team since day one, to be honest with you. Uh, maybe like not going for too much of uh, Ukraine players, but I have looked at Zinchenko in match day two. I have looked at French players in match day two, you know, uh, before uh, this season started for Euro fantasy football. So we are all going to have similar teams, but what I'm trying to do is create the template here, but bring in different players that not everyone's going to go for. And that's how we will you know, try and get those extra uh, points to get a better rank. Next up of my midfielders, I got Raheem Sterling, 3% owned, um, scored uh, a, a good goal. He got into a good position. And to be honest with you guys, watching this England game against Croatia, him, Mason Mount, and to be honest with you, all the other England players, except for Walker um, and Harry Kane, uh, played really, really well. And uh, I was a bit surprised of Sterling starting, to be honest with you. And he performed well. And uh, why not pick him in our teams? You know, uh, do I think that he's going to start? Yeah, why not? I know they played uh, a lot of minutes. What is it? 80, yeah, 89 minutes there. Um, you know, he is a player that actually gets into good positions. And against Scotland, who basically... Needs to go for it a little bit. Um, you know, if they win this game against England, they've got a good chance to go through. Um, you know, it's not good to kind of like leave it to the last match. And uh, I can see a lot of goals here. I'm not sure about the, the defence. Like, I'm not sure if they're going to um, uh, keep a clean sheet. However, looking at the uh, Scotland's front line, I can't see them too threatening. So I can see England doing well here. Um, so that's why I doubled up on England players. Actually, I tripled up because I do have Pickford. But I don't think that I would need Pickford because i got Domaruma. But we will see. Next up is Golovin um, from Russia. Now, this is one of my differentials. And I want to try my luck. I really do like watching the first game. So, you know, it's just my strategy. I like, like having some players here, some players there, over here and there. It's just the way I play it. I like, I like it like that. Um, you know, I like the fact that, that the first game, I like to just pick a player and just see what happens. You know, if I get a good start, then happy days throughout the week, right? Um, so, Golovin is here because I do want a Russian player against Finland. I think Russia is going to do well here against Finland. And uh, I found space for the Russian midfielder. So, Golovin is here. He takes set pieces for Russia. Plays like 90 minutes for them. So he's one of the main players. And that's why he's in. And one of the other things is. I'm attacking this Finland side. They are conceding a lot of shots. I'm just basically attacking this fixture against Finland. And plus it's the first game. We'll be able to see the team line up. Then I can switch my players around a little bit. And just go for a plain Russian player. And Golovin is a player that takes set pieces for them. Their main player that could get some goals or an assist. And the other differential, but to be honest with you, the limitless chip is a differential, is Perisic. Uh, I had Luka Modric, and I have read the comments on my previous video. And yeah, like, he is more explosive than Modric. He is a player that could get, like, two or three goals. You know, he is a player that is very attacking. And uh, if... Croatia is going to score. It's going to come from Modric or Perisic. So that's why he's in the team. Um, I can change him. 
you know, there is no problem for me actually to switch my players around. So yeah, he's not 100% nailed on. It kind of gives my team a better structure. So that was the midfielders. And the defenders, I'm pretty much set. Spinozola um, against Switzerland is going to be tough. I think it's going to be tight. So I'm hoping that he can keep a clean sheet. I kind of doubled up on the Italian defense here. And 9% owned. Scored 9 points in the last game against Turkey. A very attacking uh, fullback. Um, he was in the box a lot of times. Um, he could have scored. He could have got assists. So yeah, I love that kind of sort of player. That is in the box, so he's in the team. Thomas Munier is definitely in my team now because uh, Castagna is out of the tournament because of an injury. Um, yeah, the only reason that he played 63 minutes is because he came on. So, yeah, he is definitely here. We know that he can do really well. One of the reasons that I didn't have him in my team because I wasn't sure that he was going to start. And I was right, he didn't start, but yeah, like injury happened to Castagna and uh, Thomas Muno came on, got a clean sheet, got an assist and a goal. And he was in that attacking position like a lot of times. He was in the box, he could have got more goals. So he's a very attacking player against Denmark. It's going to be quite difficult, but I'm going to take that risk. And the other player here is Zinchenko, 9% owned. Only one point in the last game against Netherlands. However, he is playing out of position. He's playing in that midfield role. And if I'm thinking that Ukraine is going to do well against North Macedonia, then I want this player in my team. Uh, Zinchenko is 5.5. Um, a cheap player if you just want to uh, bring in a player without using uh, the limitless chip, then go for him. Fantastic option. And as for my other defense here, I've got uh, Hernandez and I have got uh, Pavard. Two great um, defenders from France. We will see how well they play. Um, they are playing Germany next. However, this game against Hungary, I think they can do really well. I've seen them play in the Champions League games and they are very good options. So... And the goalkeepers here, I've got Domaruma. I'm hoping they can keep a clean sheet, then I don't have to bring on Pickford. So that is my team. So if I look at this team, maybe I can remove Hernandez, maybe I can remove per Perisic, and maybe I can remove Harry Kane. And that is pretty much it. Everyone else is pretty much set. So I'm looking at, so here, here's a good strategy to look at that I like to do. Uh, let's just go for Spain. I just bring in Alaba. Alaba actually played really well. I uh, could have got uh, a lot more than a clean sheet. So as you can see, I got one, two, three, four, five different nations for the defense. So I got basically five chances to keep a clean sheet. Now what I'm trying to do is out of those fives, uh, defenders I'm trying to get at least three returns because at the end of the day we need three defenders to start with like we have to have three defenders for our formation and I'm gonna hope that one of my goalkeepers keeps a clean sheet so I'm pretty set so I really like this kind of strategy going on um, and for this reason then I'll just have only two um, French players I actually want three then I might actually remove Harry Kane for Griezmann. So this is the other transfer force that I have in mind. So you guys let me know what you think. But we'll see how it goes in tonight's games. And there we go. I am pretty much set. Let's just confirm this for a second. And uh, as you can see, I will have what? Um, one, two, sorry. Uh, there we go. One, two, three, four players playing in the first day then I have one two three four in the next uh, game so this will be um, there we go on, on, a, on a Thursday and uh, for the Friday's games you know I've got Perisic I've got um, Sterling and Pickford here against Scotland and in last game I've got the three uh, French players and Alaba to help me out so I'm pretty set and plus like for the captain options I've got Insigne uh, I've got Lukaku I got um, Raheem Sterling or Perisic if I want to go for him. And I got Mbappe or Griezmann if I want to 
and go for that last captain option. To be honest with you guys, I don't want to wait to the last fixture to get me a captain return. I really want a captain return before that. So if I get around eight points and above, I'm keeping my captain. Um, six points, I will change and I'll keep changing until the last day. But eight points, I'll keep and then, yeah, I'll just see what happens there. I think that is a, a decent amount. So that is a pretty much it. I hope that I will do well uh, for match day two and just push onwards and get into the top 10K, top 5K, top 1,000. There is a massive possibility that that can happen even tonight if Jota gets a lot of goals. However, there's a lot of highly owned players left yet to play. So I will be dropping a little bit. However... I have used the limitless chip now. I'm going for it. And I think at the end of match day two, we will see where we at. I think it's going to be a good one, but we will see. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for joining. Uh, follow me on Twitter if you want any kind of updates. And that is pretty much it. Uh, I will do my best uh, to create a deadline stream, but that's not 100% nailed. But I'll let you guys know. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you guys next time. See ya.